Hello, my name is Chris Morosky, and I'm one of the directors at Pathways School. Today I'm going to show you a little bit about hand drill fire making, and I'm hopefully going to make this look easy. For starters, I'm going to choose a set out of a mullein stalk and a clematis vine board. Handrail fire making is often considered to be a very difficult way of starting a fire, but it doesn't have to be. There are some things that we need to look at in order to make this an efficient way of fire starting. First is choosing the material. Your spindle should be as straight as you can get it. And I'm going to show you a special technique so that you can use fairly short spindles. And your fireboard should be thinner than what you would normally use for bow drill. So uh, somewhere in the range of a quarter to three eighths of an inch thick. Just like with bow drill fire making, we want to have the notch cut in to take out about one eighth of the circle that's burned in from the spindle. One of the biggest reasons people will struggle sometimes with a hand drill set is because of moisture. Now, I'm always going to consider that the ground is damp, so I never put my set and leave it there onto the ground. I'll use a dry piece of bark, and I'll use that as a barrier between the ground and my fireboard, and it also catches the coal that I'll then use to transfer into the tinder bundle. I'm also keeping all of my fire materials inside of a basket that I keep very dry, store it off of the ground, and if I need to, I take it out by the fire and dry out all of the contents even a little bit more. The reason why this is so critical, it's, the, it's a concept that's easy to understand if you think of getting out of a swimming pool on a hot day, but there's a bit of a breeze. You're cold. And the reason is because the water goes through a phase change from a liquid to a gas. If we were talking chemistry, this would make a lot of sense. In chemistry, when something goes through a phase change, it either gives off heat or it absorbs heat. When water goes from a liquid to a gas, it absorbs heat. So if you have moisture in your fireboard or your spindle, and you're creating all of this heat through friction, the act of that water changing from a liquid to a gas is absorbing the heat as quickly as you're making it. If you have damp materials, it is almost impossible with the amount of energy you can generate with a hand drill to start a fire with it. You've got to keep your materials dry. Start out just by warming up the set. We don't need to work out uh, and, and, and tire ourselves out initially. It takes a little while to get things hot, so do that without getting tired because you'll need a little bit of extra energy later. I'm doing a floating technique which keeps my hands in one place. We'll go over that in a few minutes. Now I've got some smoke that's coming out, but I'm not likely to create a coal until I've filled up that notch with dust. The notch is getting pretty well filled up now. More smoke coming out. I can put a little bit more downward pressure on it. Go a little bit faster. There's a coal. Some books say that uh, you should quickly take the coal and put it into your tinder bundle. There's no need for that. Um, the tinder bundle's already made, so that was smart. But this coal is going to last for a couple of minutes. I can take all the extra dust and I can push it together. It'll just make this coal bigger. I'm going to take my fire kit 
take it off the ground and put it away so that I don't have any risk of it getting damp on the ground because I may need to use it again soon. For a tinder bundle, in this case, I'm using finely shredded western red cedar bark. I like to start the tinder bundles this way because your breath has moisture and it also has less oxygen. And I've watched people blow the coal through one side of their tinder bundle and out the other. If you wave it this way, then the coal spreads evenly through the middle of the tinder bundle. Finally, when it's nice and hot, maybe one quick breath of air and you've got flame. I've been starting fires with a hand drill now for over 25 years. So if what I showed you today looked easy and it was for me, it might not be for you. Don't give up. It wasn't easy for me when I got started either. I'm going to show you now the floating technique, which is more efficient than the way many people start fires with a hand drill. And um, let's try that out. Floating with a hand drill is actually quite easy. There's only two different parts. There's a pass phase and a recovery phase. So start at the bottom of the spindle and put your hands into an upward facing V. Try to keep your forearms moving parallel with the ground. Use your whole hand. Recover, bringing your hands back up to an, a V. And then the pass phase, recover, pass, recover and I'm off the spindle. Now, when I'm doing this, my hands aren't quite so exaggerated, but it enables me to keep my hands in one place on the spindle and put downwards pressure. I watch some people who say that they're doing the floating technique and they're rocking with their hands. It's not quite the same thing. It's not as efficient. You can't get as much downward pressure that way. So it is actually two distinct motions. When I'm using this technique with a hand drill, I'm always using it to warm up the set. There's no reason to put in a huge amount of extra energy when you've got to build up the heat and you also have to fill up that notch with dust before you're likely to get a coal. This is pretty easy for me to do and it's also muscularly efficient. Now if you're only using this little section of your hand and you're starting your hand drill like that, that's a lot of work for your body to do. It takes just about as much energy for you to push your arm this far as it does for you to push it that far. So long strokes with your hand, warm up the set, and I'm not using very much energy right now. Now you can see that the notch is just about all filled with dust. And I'm to the point now where I can put more pressure, faster rotation, and I can go for a coal.